نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما بك ومعرفة يا رب العالمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We start yesterday the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he already uh, made the agreement with those 73 companions as they went to Medina. Before they went to Medina, there is one thing we need to know. When they finished when they check hands with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then all the people in Mecca, all the people in Mecca, they heard a voice of someone who was saying a few words. He was saying, he was saying, do not check hands with Mudammam. Remember, the people of Mecca, they used to call the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, they used to call him Mudammam. You know, Muhammad means the one who is always appreciated. And Mudammam is the opposite. The one who is always being uh, humiliated or discriminated. So that that they heard that voice, that one was saying, do not check hands with Mudamma. He is making you away from worshipping your God into worship from worshipping your gods into worshipping only one God. So who was that one? A shaitan. It was shaitan, and all the people in Mecca they heard him. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he replied, he said, Khasit. Khasit means means uh, be humiliated. Then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, one day I will be free to attack you. When, when those new Muslims, when they heard this, what did they say? Because they didn't know who is this. It's a voice of a human being. So they didn't know who is this. So what did they say? They said, Ya Rasulullah, if you want, if you want, right now, we take out our swords and we attack the people of Quraysh, the people of Mecca. See how ready they were to die. There were only 70 people. But they heard something bad about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so no way to keep silent. Then they were ready to fight, even if they will all be dead, they are ready. But then what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, he said, no, we don't have the permission from Allah Ta'ala to fight or to attack or to uh, to defend even. So he said, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, dismiss, just go, please. And they left in the same way. They didn't all leave together. They left also two, two, you know, separated. And 
you know, this is God or the man is one of the companions, he is telling this story. He said, he said, we went back to our group. Remember we said that those people from Medina, those 73 people, they didn't come alone. Remember we said they came, they came with the disbelievers together. And remember we said that the disbelievers, they didn't know that those 73 people are Muslims. So they arrived at night and they slept and as if nothing happened. Next day morning, the big people in Mecca, because they heard the voice of Shaitan, they heard that voice. So next day morning, the big people of Mecca, they went to the group of those people coming from Al Medina. They went there and then they asked them. They said, We heard that you are you are having an agreement with Muhammad. They said, if this happened, then if this really happened, then we have to fight. We have to attack you while we don't want to attack you. So, the 73 Muslims, they didn't say anything. And the rest, they didn't know what happened. They, they didn't know that this happened. So, they replied, they said, no, we never had any agreement with Muhammad. Who is Muhammad? We even don't know him. And the Muslims, they didn't say anything. So those are the people, those are the people of Mecca then, they left. Now, so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he already, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he already uh, assigned those, uh, he already assigned those, those 12, those, those 12, and remember we said that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he chose 12 from them, to be their leaders. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he told those twelve that they have told those twelve that they have to they have to uh, take care of their people and Musab ibn Umayr was with them also helping them. He went back with them also to spread Islam. So, now, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he stayed in Mecca, and then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he saw a dream that the place where he should immigrate, he should leave, is Medina. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he announced to everybody, he said that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala already told me where is the place that I will move to. That we Muslims, all of us should go there. It is Yathrib, which is Medina. So, then the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they start to move step by step and secretly. And why it was secretly? Because the people in Mecca, whenever they know that someone is moving, whenever they know that someone is going, is, is leaving Mecca, going to Medina, they either try to catch him or try to torture him or even try to kill him, depends on who is this 
person, how big or small is he? So the first and and here there was an order. The Prophet Muhammad he gave an order to all the Muslims in Mecca that they must immigrate, they must leave. It is an order from Allah Taala. The Prophet Muhammad he ordered all the people in Mecca, all the Muslims in Mecca, that they have to leave. And why it was an order that they had to leave? Because they had to go and to prepare all the things. So when the Prophet Muhammad goes there, then all the things would be ready there to start building the Islamic country or city. And here, there are a lot of stories about the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how they used to run away, how they used to leave. And a lot of stories, how much they suffer to be able to arrive to Medina. Some stories. Um Salama. Um Salama and her husband, Abu Salama. The whole family, it was Abu Salama, Um Salama, and Salama, the boy. This is the family. They were the first family obeyed the Prophet Muhammad right away and they decided to go to Medina. Abu Salama, he already prepared the, uh, the camel, one camel for him, one camel for his wife. He already prepared, which is the car, to go to Medina. Then, then, at, at the morning, at the morning, Abu Salama, he helped Um Salama, you know, to ride the camel and to hold Salama. Salama was was a kid, maybe one or two years. And then he was moving them, going to Alikum Salam wa moving them, going to Medina. On the way, or even they they didn't went, they didn't move yet, but so they were still in Mecca on the way. Who saw them? Banu al Murira. They are the the tribe of Um Salama. So they saw them. So they catch him and they catch the camel which Um Salama is riding on. They told Abu Salama, they told him, you believed in Muhammad, this is your problem. And you want to go to Medina, this is your problem. But we will not allow you to take our daughter. Although she was his wife, but this is the hatred that they didn't want her to leave and she is Muslim and to leave Mecca. So they catch her. So if you want to leave, leave, but leave 
But you cannot take our daughter with you. And the mother was holding her son. So, who saw them? Banu Asad. Who are Banu Asad? The tribe of who? The tribe of Abu Salama. So the tribe of Abu Salama, they saw Um Salama holding who? Holding the son of Abu Salama. So also the tribe of Abu Salama, they are unhappy with Abu Salama that he became a Muslim. So they told him, you want to go, go, but we would not leave our son with Um Salama. So they catch the boy from his mother. And Banu al Mughira, the people, the tribe of Um Salama, they were catching also the boy. They didn't want them to take the boy. All of, all of this is happening in front of who? In front of the mother and the father. They see how they are fighting for their son, and both of them, they cannot do anything. And they kept on fighting for the son. This is authentic. It is mentioned in the Sira until the hand of the son was cut. Imagine, imagine those are how, how they were at that time. And the father couldn't come because they would kill him. And the mother couldn't come because they would kill her. And the hand was cut from the side of the mother. So the boy with cut hand was with who? With the father, with the father's side. All of this for what? All of this because they want to follow the order of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said go to Medina, then they had to go to Medina. Today, the Prophet Muhammad is saying, pray two rakah sunnah under the air condition. Many of us don't do it. Today, the Prophet Muhammad is saying, just love each other. We don't do it. Respect each other. We don't do it. Cooperate with each other. We don't do it. See, so those are the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and we we know who are. Then what happened? Who is telling this story, by the way? Um Salama, the mother. She is telling this story. She said, and I looked at my husband, and I found that he left. He left where? To Medina. He knew that he couldn't get the son. He knew that he couldn't get back his wife. So, I just followed the order of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He left there. And his tribe, they took the son, and her tribe, they took her. They loved her, they didn't allow her to leave the tribe anymore. She is telling the story, she said, and I became lonely, away from my husband, and away from my son, 
and I cannot see my son although he is next to me, and I cannot go to follow my husband, and I cannot do what the Prophet Muhammad Sallam ordered me to do. And of course, not allowed for her, it is not allowed to go out, so it is not allowed to see the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. Then you can imagine the suffering. She is away from her husband, away from her son, and cannot see the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. She said, so every day, I go out, you know, in her tribe, I go out and I sit under the sun in the desert and I don't eat and I don't drink until the end of the day. She said, and I kept on doing this until one of my cousins, he passed by, he saw me. So he felt sorry for me that every day from morning to evening I do this. So he talked to my family. And he asked them to release me. She said this happened after one year. Imagine one year of suffering, one year every day from morning to evening, just sit in the desert under the sun, just to show that she is unhappy with what is happening. Today, today, who is ready to suffer 10% of what Om Salama suffered? Today, if very few little things happen, not exactly the same as our schedule, then we will show Allah the Baraka wa Ta'ala in all the ways that we are angry with Him. We need, we need to readjust ourselves because this means that we are very impolite with Allah Tabaraka. See, when you become angry with Allah Tabaraka, will you threaten Him? Will he be afraid that you will leave? Will he be worried about you, that oh, you are going to disbelieve in me? No, no, no. The only thing is that maybe he will be angry with you and, and don't forgive you. If he is angry with you, and he doesn't forgive you, then you are done. On the day of judgment, who can defend you? Nobody. Nobody. Not even yourself, you will not be able to do anything. If you are ordered to go to hell, who can who can help you to run away from hell? We need to understand. We need to understand that we are so far away from the correct way of dealing with Allah Tawara Tawata. See, whenever we are talking about anything related to this life, Many of us, whenever we are talking about anything related to this life, we totally ignore Allah. The word, the word. You just think about it. Let us talk about a small trip. If we want to go to a trip, 
tomorrow, for example. How many of us will think? Can we pray during the trip? How many of us will think of this? How many of us will think during this trip? Are we able to recite some Quran? Are we able to learn something about Islam? Are we able to say something about the Prophet Muhammad? How many of us think of this? All of us will think, what is the lunch? What is the dinner? Any shopping malls, any things to buy, any special things to buy. And, and, is there Wi-Fi? Is there internet? Is there signal? Am I exaggerating? This is our life today. This is our life today while, while Abu Salama, he saw his hand, he saw his son with one hand cut. He saw his wife hold and kept by her people and there is an order from the Prophet Muhammad He kept going. Listen, when Abu Salama passed away, Allah, Um Salama, she was so happy, so sad, and so, you know, she was so sad. This happened in Medina, because later they met in Medina. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is teaching Um Salama when she saw her husband passed away in front of her. And she couldn't bear it. This is, this is her husband, the one that she was with him all of her life. It was not easy for her. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was teaching Um Salama. He was saying, Ya Um Salama. Say, Inna Lillah wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun. Say, we are from Allah, and to Him we will go back. Then He said, Ya Umma Salam, Umma Salam, say, May Allah, may Allah reward Abu Salama, and may Allah give me patience, and may Allah, may Allah give me, give me better than what I had. Oh Allah, or mercy Abu Salama. And, and reward me for my patience. And replace this into better situation. This is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is telling Um Salama is teaching Um Salama to say. This is what we should say. This is what we should say. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Allahumma khlukni fi musibati khayra. This is what we should say. So Um Salama. So Um Salama, what did she say? She said, "Woman, khayyam min Abu Salam, and who is better than Abu Salam?" Abu um, Salam is telling us this story. She said, "I said exactly what the Prophet Muhammad ordered me to say, but then I said to myself, in a very low voice, to myself." And who is better than Abu She didn't want the Prophet Muhammad to hear what she said. Why? Because she thought that it is impolite to say so. See, see how much they used to care when they are dealing with the Prophet Muhammad her husband is in front of her dead and she is thinking that she is thinking in a way that she shouldn't 
say any equalized thing to the prophet Muhammad. But for us, not if your husband is passed away next to you. No, if you lost very small thing, you may swear Allah. And if not swear him, complain in a very impolite way. If Allah Taala wants to punish us for those moments only, all of us we will be punished. Today, today, the the simple and easiest thing we say is that we don't know why Allah is doing this to us. Right or wrong? Many of us sometimes we say this and we don't know what Allah is saying. But then we remember that we say anyway for sure it is okay. You know, as if we just have to say this sentence. While if we understand how much Allah Taala cares about us, we we wouldn't we wouldn't even think of saying such such words. Then at the end, Um Salama, she got married to who? To the Prophet Muhammad. So who is better, Abu Salama or the Prophet Muhammad? So Um Salama then, because she said Inna Lillah wa Inna Ilayhi Rajiun, because she followed what the Prophet Muhammad Sallam said, because she followed the order without thinking, without complaining, then she got better than Abu Salama or not. Today, we miss this art. We need to learn the art of love, the art of following the Prophet Muhammad. Today, many of us, we follow the Sunnah when we like it. But when we don't like it, we have thousands of excuses not to follow the Sunnah. So then, Um Salama, she said that when that when my cousin he saw me, he went to my my family, he talked to them, so they accept to release me. After one year, they accept to release her. She said, "This is Um Salama talking." She said, "So I prepare my camel." To go to Medina. Um Salama, alone from Mecca to Medina, not by airplane, no, by camel. In the desert, she doesn't know the way, but but she has to. Why? And here, why she has to? It was, it was even double. Why? Because it was after one year. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is where? Already arrived to Medina. She couldn't bear it. She couldn't bear it that I am far away, not only from my husband, not only from my son. No, my son is something else. Later we will know it. But not far away from my husband only, no, far away from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she prepared her camel and she wanted to go to Medina. Banu Abdul Asad, the family of Abu Salama, when they knew that she is going to Abu Salama, they gave her the kid. So she took her kid back. And she was on the way to Al Medina.
She said, I was on the way and I was scared, but I knew that Allah Taala is with me. She said, once I arrived to At Tanaim. At Tanaim is one place in Mecca on the way to Medina. Actually, that is the place that if you want to make Umrah, you have to go there and come back. So it is almost the border of Mecca. Once she arrived there, she said, one person, his name was Uthman ibn Talha. He saw me. And Uthman was disbeliever. Later, Uthman became Muslim, but here he was a disbeliever. See, we are seeing different stories or different pictures of Arabs, but at the same time, Um Salama, she knew that Allah is with her. So, so Allah Taala arranged Uthman ibn Talha, the mushrik, the disbeliever, to be with her. Uthman looked at her, a lonely female, ready to travel. She's traveling. So he looked at her. He said, Where are you going? He doesn't know her. She said, I'm going to Al Medina. She said, I'm going to follow my husband. My husband is Al Medina, and I'm going to. So then he looked at her, he said, you are Um Salama. He knew from the one hand kid, because everybody knew the story. He said, you are Um Salama. She said, yes. He said, it is not allowed for you to go alone to Medina. Um Salama is telling the story. She said, and Uthman, is a very brave and a person who has the dignity. So he took his camel, he prepared himself, and he went with me to Medina. Listen, 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 listen. She said, this is Mushrik, this is disbeliever. She said, he was with me all the time. Whenever it is the time to relax, or whenever I want to go to toilet or whatever, he let my camel sit down, and then he moved and turned his face until I get off the camel. And then when I get off the camel, he comes back, take the camel, and tie it, you know, to take care of the camel. And wait for me, wait for me, away under a tree or whatever. When I finish, he see me coming. He bring the camel. He let the camel sit and he leave until I jump over the camel and then he come and take the camel. This is a disbeliever. He was doing this in order not to see her body when she is jumping on or off because you know the dress when you are jumping over the camel, it is not only a chair, it is a camel that he was turning his face that he would not see any part of her body. Do we care when the sisters are moving here and there? 
说，当这女生在那边走来走去的时候，我们有就是会有有在乎吗 ？But also in another hand, do our sisters care about the brothers? 那另外一方面来讲，我们要反观我们这边的女生呢，那我们会去管这些男生怎么样看吗 ？Or they just act as if they are alone in this place? 还是说女生呢，她就在这边呢，好像她就旁边都没有人，就她一个人样，她要做什么就做什么 ？We need to learn those things also. For example, for example, we are learning when you are getting into into the toilet. For example, do you remember? Do you remind yourself that there are people, there are brothers, pass by, going and coming next to you? When you are inside, suppose when you are inside, you shouldn't talk. Well, in fact, there are some sisters. They talk and laugh and smile and make jokes and maybe sleep, do everything. Just we women, 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 You have to take care of your clothes. You have to take care of your voice. You have to take care of your makeup. You have to take care of your perfume. All of those things, actually, they shouldn't really be so obvious in a way that you may make troubles to some brothers. 就是我们女生也就注意到说，我其实在这边这里面，就是在那边呢，还是有很多的 brothers 会从我们身边经过。那我们就注意到说，我们的这个穿着也没有得体啊，那我们相处会差太太浓太透啦。Now, Om Salama, the story of Om Salama, almost finished. She said, Osman and Talha, he went with me until he reached to Yathrib, to Al Medina. Now, Osman, he was with this Om Salama, he was with this Om Medina. And he told me, Abu Salama. Is inside, you know, the tribe that they. She already arrived. Abu Salama is inside. May God protect you. And he went back to Mecca. That Abu Salama, he said, 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 It is only that he saw one female alone in the street. Oops, this is me. How come you are alone in the street? And traveling? No, you shouldn't travel alone. So here, the story of Om Salama finished. This is one out of tens of stories. Of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who are following the order from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, go to Medina. This is a few of the examples. They are just coming to Medina in the story of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Suhaib Arumi, another one. Suhaib, this person is another one. Suhaib Arumi, Suhaib the Romanian. He was from Rome. He is a Roman man. Suhaib, when he came, he heard about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was a slave because they kept him, and then he was released, and then he was doing business, and then he became rich in Mecca. And he became Muslim. He decided to go to Medina. He took his things, he took his money, he prepared himself. And he was going out of Mecca. The people of Mecca, Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, whatever, they catch him. He put all his money and all his things to leave Mecca. Just to be those Abu Lahab, those people caught him. They said, "Where are you going?" He asked them, "Where are you going?" You came here, nobody. You came here as a slave. 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 One of us, of course, not one of them, Abu Bakr actually, but they consider themselves one of us. Release you here. He said, "We are one of you. We will release you. That is not true. It is not that we release you. It is Abu Bakr who releases you. You use our place. 
You use our land to make money. And now you are leaving and taking our money. No way. We will not let you go. Listen what Suhaib Arun said. He said, As I am nobody, if I give you all what I have, will you let me go to Medina? They said, Yes, you are nobody. Give us all what you have and we will release you. He gave them everything he had, including including his uh, because he had one camel and he had uh, a small horse or whatever. So he only kept with him only the camel that he is riding and some food and water. They took everything from him. He accepted just to release him. Why? Because there is an order from the Prophet Muhammad to go to Medina. You should do whatever you can do to arrive there. The Prophet Muhammad already already gave a name to Suhaib, you know, gave a name of his son, which is Yahya. So, the, so they used to call him Abu Yahya. Abu Yahya means the father of Yahya. When the Prophet Muhammad when he knew this, he said, Arabi Halbayo Abu Yahya. He said, Abu Yahya, you did a very good deal. What is the good deal? He lost all of his money. So, according to our prayer, is this a deal? This is not a deal. He lost everything. But, according to, according to the way how they learned from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alaykum salam wa rahmatullah, then yes, it is a very good deal. Why? I lost all the things I have. Why? To follow the order of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here actually there is something we need to learn also. See? The people of Quraysh, those Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and Umayyah and you know all of those, they didn't allow Suhaib Arun, the stranger, they didn't allow him to take his money, the money that he made in Mecca. He made it, he was doing business and he made it. They didn't allow him to take it. They said that you made this money here, so you shouldn't take it with you. Here I want to say something, although it is not very related, but just for us to learn something. When you are working in a place, when you are doing business in a place, and you are making money from that place, you should respect the place. There are some people, they are living in a place, they are making huge money from that place and then they discriminate the place and the people in the place. This is disrespect. And this is impolite. And this is not from Islam. The Prophet Muhammad Al-Mut'im ibn Ali Al-Mushrik, the disbeliever, when he was protecting the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu what did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu say after Badr? He said, Wallahi, if Al-Mut'im were alive and came to ask me to release all of those captives, I will do it because he was protecting me one day. So when I live in a place which is not my place, not my family, not my 
tribe, not my people. But I am making money from that place. I should respect that place. And I should respect the people in that place. I shouldn't, I shouldn't discriminate them or I shouldn't criticize them. So this is Suhaib al Rumi. Then, and a lot of others, they were immigrating, they were moving from Mecca to Medina. Omar ibn al Khattab, he also moved to Medina with other two companions with him. The first one, his name was Hisham ibn al As. And the second one, his name was Ayyash ibn Rabia. So those three, they decided to go together to Al Medina. And they, so they used to go either groups or individual. Now we go back to the Prophet Muhammad The Prophet Muhammad is still in Mecca. And the Prophet Muhammad is not the same as others. It is not his decision to go to Medina. It is not he the one who decides when and how. Allah Ta'ala is the one who is deciding for him. So the Prophet Muhammad was in Mecca. Almost all the Muslims in Mecca, they went to Medina. And a lot of people from Habasha, from Al Habasha, remember a lot of Muslims they are in Al Habasha, they when they knew that the Muslims they became in Medina, they went to Al Medina. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he is waiting for the uh, for the order or for the let us say permission from Allah Taala for him to go to Medina. And who is with him? Abu Bakr and Ali bin Abi Talib was still there in Mecca. The disbelievers and Mushrikeen in Mecca, they were sitting, gathering together, and they decided to make a decision related to Muhammad. They said, they said, now Muslims, they became more and more and more in Yathrib, in Medina. If Muhammad goes there, for sure, he will have a very strong power there, so he will be able to come back and destroy us. So we should kill him. Now, they make it so clear that the only way to solve our problem is to kill Muhammad. There was one person sitting with them, with those disbelievers. Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, uh, Umayyah, Al Walid, Suhail ibn Amr. And there was one person, they didn't know who is he, but he was sitting with them. And that person, he was giving suggestions. He was giving suggestions. So, the first suggestion they said, Abu Jahad, Abu Lahab, we don't know who, he said, let us go catch Muhammad, tie him up, put him on a camel, and let the camel take him to the desert until he died. So that person, that they don't know who is he, he said, and what if someone met him on the way and released him, then he will go to many Then, another one, they 
said, okay, no need to kill him. We just put him in a prison. We lock him here in Mecca. We put him in the prison. We keep him here until he died. Then that person that nobody knows who is he, he said, this is not a good idea because then when you lock him there, his people, they will start to attack you to release him. They said, another one said, okay, so we keep him, but we make sure that he will not be able to leave Medina. We keep, always we keep people surrounding him, don't let him go out of Mecca. Then that person, he said, Muhammad would be able to convince those people with him to become Muslim, and he would become a hero. Then one person, he said, okay, the best way, I will go and kill him tonight. Then that person, he said, no, if you did so, his people, you know, the tribe of Muhammad, they will revenge and they will kill you and they will kill people from your tribe. Then they didn't know what to say. Then that person that nobody knows who he is, he said, the best way is you collect 50 people from the 50 tribes because they were 50 different tribes. You collect 50 young, strong men. From each tribe, one person. And then those 50, they go to the house of Muhammad. They, all of them, in one time, they kill Muhammad. And then the tribe of Muhammad will not be able to revenge from all of those 50 tribes. So they will accept to take the penalty. If there was money, they will accept to take the penalty, which is so easy for us to pay. So they said, this is the best solution. And they decided to do so. So they arranged and decided to do so. And by the way, just for your information, the person that nobody knew who was he, he was Shaitan. Shaitan will never miss such meeting. This is the most important meeting for him to be there. Don't be surprised. Today, there are a lot of shaitans around us. They sit with us, they talk to us, they eat with us, they go with us, they come with us. We need to know how to pick up the shaitan. We need to learn how to, to, to identify or to know that this is shaitan and this is not shaitan. Don't think that shaitan, you know, is red face and has two horns and so it's not necessary. Okay, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He already said, min al jinnati wal nas. Min shabri waswasi al nas الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. So there are some men. Nas means a human. There are some men. They are shaitan. And that was one of them. And you could see how very good suggestion he gave them. But then, so what? Shaitan, okay, Shaitan. Shaitan, the one that a lot of people, they feel so scared when they hear Shaitan. But then, what happened? Were they able to kill the Prophet Muhammad 
大家听到撒旦就很害怕，可是呢，他没有办法把世界全部都杀掉吗？杀掉吗 ？Of course not。那没办法。Why? Because Allah Taala Taala doesn't want the Prophet Muhammad that time to be killed. If Allah Taala Taala doesn't want something to happen, who can make it happen? Allah 还没有让世界或者在那个时候被杀掉。如果 Allah 不要让他这个件事情发生，有谁可以让他发生？ Not only shaitan, shaitan and jinn and angels and the humans and insects and animals and all of them, if they cooperate together to hurt you, but Allah Tabaraka wa Taala doesn't want you to be hurt, will they be able to hurt you? So all the animals, jinn, insects, all the animals, 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 For example, I want to buy a house. And I already saw one house, and I really like it, and I really want to buy it. So I do my best to buy it, but then Allah Tabaraka wa Taala doesn't want me to buy that house, so I couldn't buy it. Then I still try. Then all the brothers they come and say, "Brother, just forget about that house. You know." It seems you already did your best to buy it, but you couldn't. So it seems that it is not yours. Allah Taala wa Taala is not arranging it for you. So leave it. That 大家都要跟你劝啊，说你已经想尽办法要去买，都还没有买到，那表示这不是阿拉为你准备的，那你就不要，你就放弃了。Then I say yes, Alhamdulillah, I agree one hundred percent, and I have to believe, and I accept, but I will try again. 他说的 Alhamdulillah， 我非常同意你讲的话呢，那不过我还是要再试一次。So is this a belief? This is not belief. Why we have the function of istikhar? What is the istikhar? Istikhar is not that you pray at night and then you sleep and then if you see a nice dream then this means don't go ahead and if you see a nightmare then this means don't do it. No, all of this is fake. What is the istikhara? Istikhara is what it means. We go back to the house that I want to buy. 就是说，我们刚刚讲说要去买这个房子。I want to buy a house. 我要去买一栋房子。And I feel that it is okay. 我觉得这房子不错。Then, okay, give me ten minutes. 然后给我十分钟。Then, I intend to pray istikhara, two rakat istikhara. 然后我现在呢，我就举例说，我现在来立两块的 istikhara. Right away, right away, I make the two rakat istikhara. 然后马上立两块的 istikhara. And I make the dua, the supplication of the istikhar. Allahumma inni astaghfiruka bi ilmika wa kudratika ma inna katana wa la halawa. And anyway, the dua of the istikhar, we know. Then I say, I say, Oh Allah, if, if, then I mention the thing. If buying this house is good for me, make it easy, make it, make it done and easy. Oh Allah, if buying this house is bad for me in this life and in the hereafter, make me away from it and make it away from me and arrange for me better than it. So Allah, if you buy this house, then for my future and the hereafter, there is no good for me in this life and in the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Where is the contract? I want to buy the house. Then they say, okay, wait, here is the contract. Oh, okay, wait, we couldn't find the contract. Wait, let us check where is the contract. Then we go try to check the contract. Oh, it is in that office. Oh, the office is closed. Okay, no problem. In another office. Also, that office is closed. You know, why it is closed? Today is Tuesday. It is a working day, but it is closed. We don't know. Let us call. Then we call. Then the mobile is is off. Then I say, okay, thank you. Salam alaikum. Then I leave. This is the answer from Allah Taala. This is Allah gave us a answer. But then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Then they say we will give you ten thousand dollar discount, and here is the contract. Just sign. That's what we said. We went out after the meeting. They said we will give you a ten thousand dollar discount. Then I said. 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 Then I said.
contract here and here and there, and then I wait. And then maybe I go and bring one contract. And then they say, yeah, but actually, you know, you still have to pay this and that. Oh, okay, I will pay this and that. And then, you know, you have to do this and that in the house. Okay, I'll pay. Why? Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is showing you, hey, this is not your home. Don't buy it. It is not good to buy it. So I want to buy it. We need to understand our religion. Islam is so nice and so simple and so easy. But then, we, because we are complicated, then we make it complicated. Look at the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Were they living the same way we are living? Everything was simple and everything was going well. Why? Not because they were simple people only, no. But because they knew the method. They knew the way which is from Allah wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad It is clear. Just follow it. And that's all. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he knew, he knew that they are preparing to kill him. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, since long time, every day, you know, since long time, he was preparing two camels, feeding them well, preparing them well, waiting for the order, and he hoped that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will allow him to go with them to Medina. Abu Bakr, she is talking. She is saying, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, every day, he used to visit us. Of course, this is Abu Bakr. Every day, he used to visit us, either morning or evening. Of course, you know, Abu Bakr, this is Abu Bakr. So, Aisha is saying, one day, which is the day that they decide to leave, that day, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he came to us at noon. At noon. So, Abu Bakr knew that there is a reason. How come the Prophet Muhammad is coming in a different time? So Abu Bakr as siddiq he looked at the Prophet Muhammad and he asked, any special thing? Then the Prophet Muhammad he said, Ya Abu Bakr, it is the time to go to the See, with all the relation between him and Abu Bakr, but still, see, see the politeness. See, this, this is, this is the thing that we need to learn. Abu Bakr. Everybody knows who is Abu Bakr and who is Muhammad Sallallahu Everybody knows that they are always together in everything. Everybody knows how much Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, suffered for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but still, Abu Bakr He didn't say, he didn't say, Ya Rasulullah, the two camels, they are ready, let us go. No. What did he say? He looked at the Prophet Muhammad and he was nervous. He looked at the Prophet Muhammad and he said, can I go with you? See? Of course, today, today, no need for this question. Anyway, you know, today, I take your things, and I take your car, and I eat your food, and don't need to ask you for anything. We are friends, no problem. We need to learn, we need to learn. The Prophet Abu Bakr he is looking at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and asking, Can I go with you? Now, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, We are together. Aisha is talking. She said, she said, 
I have never seen in all of my life someone crying because he is happy. That was the first time I see someone crying because he is happy. It was my father Abu Bakr when he heard that he will be with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu going to Medina. Now This is what we call it love and sincerity in relation. So when Abu Bakr when he heard this from the Prophet Muhammad, then he was crying, but he was so happy, then he said, Ya Rasulullah, I already prepared two camels, they are ready. I have been preparing them for a long time and they are ready to go to Medina. But what did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu say? He said, not now. Now no need for those camels. See, this is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This is the Messenger of Allah. Allah wa Taala is protecting him. But still, still, we need, we need to check, we need to follow the steps to be safe. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said, Ya Abu Bakr, you go first and don't use those two camels, we will use them later. You go on foot. You go first and he told him what place where to meet. And he told him, and I will meet you there. And he told him the time. Actually, the place that the Prophet Muhammad asked Abu Bakr to go to is the opposite side of Medina. Although this is the messenger of Allah, although Allah wa ta is able to send Jibreel to protect him, but this is for us to learn. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't take the way to Medina, although he's going to Medina. Why? Because he knew that all the people of Mecca, they will run after him to kill him. So he took the opposite side. And the Prophet Muhammad and the Prophet Muhammad he told Abu Bakr, he told him, you prepare the things. And he told him, we are going, we are going to the cave of Thawr. That is in one mountain called Jabal al Nur, the mountain of light. Which was the opposite side of the Medina. Why the Prophet Muhammad he told him this? Because, because he wanted to arrange all the things. Although he is the messenger, he told him that, uh, yeah, so he was talking to him. Then Asma, Asma bit Abu Bakr. Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, the sister of Aisha, she was there. <clears throat> and she said, see how, see how smart they were. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was telling Abu Bakr, where will they go? So Asma, immediately she catch it. She catch it, why? She said, I know the place, I will bring you the food there. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad was telling Abu Bakr where they are going, because they need someone to, they, to feed them. They don't know. Maybe they will stay one day, two days, three days, one week. They don't know. And Asma, she used to take the food to them. And this is why they call her Datun Nipahain. The lady who has two belts. Because she used to have the two belts here and put the food here and there and to climb the mountain. You know, before I had this, I was I was a mountain climber, and when we go there, 
when we arrive on the top, when we arrive to the cave, when I was living in Mecca, when we arrive to the cave, we need to sit and relax at least for one hour because it is so tiring. <laughs> And Asma used to go there every day once. And then today we think that that Islam came to us in by DHL. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam he already prepared everything with Abu Bakr and it was actually it was a full system. Later when we finish, it was a full arrangement. Later when I finish, when we reach to Medina with the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, I will tell you about the organizations that they were with they were working with the Prophet Muhammad Sallam to arrive to Medina. No, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went back home, he prepared himself, he prepared himself that he is leaving, but he knew that those 50 people, they are waiting for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to go out of the house to kill him. And they were able to see inside the house. They could see his bed. Then Ali bin Abi Talib, this, this big man who was young, who was so young, but he was big in belief, who was brave enough, what did he say? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I will sleep on your bed. If they decided to kill you inside, then they will kill me, not you. And I will keep on moving on the bed. So they are watching the bed and then you go out, they will not see you. The one who is sleeping on the bed, is he sleeping? He knows that he will be dead. He knows that there will be 50 sword in his body. Is there anyone who is able to do it? And actually no one is asking us to do it. No one is asking us to do it. The Prophet Muhammad is only asking us to follow his sunnah. He is not asking us to die for him. And we still feel that it is so hard. What is the problem? Why we have to do this? Why we have to do that? Why Islam is so difficult? Why Islam is so complicated? It should be easy. In fact, we ask for it. We are we are nobody comparing with those Muslims. Ali bin Abi Talib, he slept on the bed of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu not to get the blessing, no, to be killed. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he left the house. Some, they say, he left and he passed by all of them and they didn't see him. And some, they say, he went from the backyard. Whatever, he could leave them. And he already went, he saw Abu Bakr, and they moved to Ghar Thaw. Now, they wait until morning, they couldn't wait more, those disbelievers, they couldn't wait more, they attack the house, they get in, and they remove the you know the cover. They want to kill the Prophet Muhammad Then they look. They found that this is Ali. 
十个人呢，他们就等到天亮就等不下去了，他们就冲进这个房间里面，然后把这个被子掀开，就发现里面是阿里。So they looked at him. They said, "We have nothing to do with you. Where is Muhammad?" 他就看着阿里说，我们我们没有，我想要跟你有什么样的瓜葛？你告诉我穆罕默德在哪里 ？So Ali, he said, "Muhammad left long time ago." 阿里就说，穆罕默德早就走了。Why he said long time ago? 为什么他说早就走了 ？That maybe they will not think. Of running after him. And by the way, Ali didn't know that the Prophet Muhammad is going to the cave of Thaw. So he said, "He left a long time ago." So they knew that he left. Okay, so he's going to Medina. So all of them, they took their horses, they took their camels, and they run after him. But where? To the side of Medina. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, they arrived to the cave of Thaw. Now, look at this. Ali was sleeping on his behalf. He was sleeping on his bed. Asma was taking the food to them. Abu Bakr was the right hand, the follower of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Bakr is the right hand, the follower of the Prophet Muhammad. Now there were others who Abdullah ibn Abu Bakr, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abu Bakr. Hey Abdullah, he is Abu Bakr's son. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him every day you go and sit with those disbelievers in Al Mushrikin and hear what they say, and then. You tell Asma. Asma will come and tell us what is going on. That's what he told Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr told him, "Every day, you go there and sit with those disbelievers. Sit there and hear what they say. Then you tell Asma. Then Asma will come and tell us what is going on. That's what he told Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr told him, "Every day, you go there and sit with those disbelievers. Sit there and hear what they say. Then you tell Asma. Then Asma will come and tell us what is going on. That's what he told Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr told him, "Every day, you go there and sit with those disbelievers. Sit there and hear what they say. Then you tell Asma. Then Asma will come and tell us what is going on. That's what he told Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr told him, "Every day, you go there and sit with those disbelievers. Sit there and hear what they say. Then you tell Asma. Then Asma will come and tell us he told them every day, you take all of this, you know, because Abu Bakr, he was, the, he was, you know, one of the business he had is that he was selling the sheep and goats and so on. So, so Ana ibn Fuhaira, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he told him, you take all of those sheep and let them go on the same way to the cave of Anur, or to the cave of uh, Thawr. Why? So... The steps of Abu Bakr and, and the Prophet Muhammad will be lost with the steps of the sheep and goats. Why? Because those, because Arabs that time, they had some very expert people. That from the shape of the step, they could know is this male, is this female, where are they going, that way or this way. They could know all the details. So the Prophet Muhammad asked Amir ibn Fuhaira to do this, that he will cover it totally. And and Abu Bakr he hired one person. His name was Abdullah Abu Nuraykem. That Abdullah was not Muslim, but they were honest in their business. That Abdullah, what was his job? He was a tourist guide. He knows. He was actually not a tourist guide. Actually, he was a TBRS. This was this this was Abdullah. He knew the ways. He knew. Yes, he knew he knew where to go. Abu Bakr hired him to be with them, taking them to Medina. That Abu Bakr then used 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 uh, he used a person. That person, he is a he is a Muslim, but he is also very good at guiding the Indian people. Then he asked him to help him to guide them to Medina. See all of these arrangements. Was it difficult for Allah Taala to send Jibril or Al Burak? To take the Prophet Muhammad 
Wasallam from here to there, same as how he took him from Mecca to Al-Aqsa. Was it difficult? No. But Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala didn't do it. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't ask for it. Why? Because this is the method. Because this is the system. Because this is the thing that we need to learn. You want to spread Islam. You want to work for Dawah. You want to talk about Islam. You want people to know Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. You want people to follow the rules of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Through internet and in your office and under the air condition, it doesn't work. So, see, according to our, our system today, see those people that I told you about them, they are six different departments, six different organizations, six different ministries for this immigrant from Mecca to Medina. The first department is the department of, of hiding things. Who is this department? Ali bin Abi Talib. Another department is the food and beverage department. Who is this department? Asma. Then the third department? The media department. Who is the media department? Abdullah ibn Abu Bakr. Abdullah, the son of Abu Bakr, the one who used to go and get the information. Abu Bakr, the earth Abdullah, he was going to get the information. Then another department, the department of, let us say, the department of, of, not guiding, the department of, of, of the tricky, tricky, uh, let us say, the, uh, to say, disguise. or to, hmm? disguise, maybe. Who is this department? Amir, the one who was sending the sheep to cover all of those uh, evidence. Then another department, it is the guiding department. Abdullah, Uraytan. Then the last department is the bodyguard department. Who is Abu Bakr? See all of these arrangements for the Prophet Muhammad Sallam to reach or to arrive safely to Medina. On the way from Mecca to Medina, Abu Bakr the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, they spent ten days. The whole trip, it took with them 10 days to arrive to Medina. But on those 10 days, a lot of different things happened. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will know what are those different things happened. Inshallah.